We have some female power now on Culture Share. She is the Calypso Queen. She won that competition in Dominica, beating all and sundry. The song that brought her to prominence, though, is something called They Could Keep Their Money, I Go Keep My Honey and Die With My Dignity, a song attacking bosses who sexually harass employees. She is the singing Sandra. Here she is now doing her 1992 hit, something called Nobody Wins a War. And after that, we'll be talking to singing Sandra. But first of all, here she is live on stage. Hear this, devastation and destruction From ever since time began Has been inflicted time and time and again By man against fellow man Yet man wouldn't learn from history It makes him more violent Producing deadly weaponry With nothing but evil intent So the war could never be over Peace will never be seen Long as man in his quest for power keep destroying fellow human beings, fellow human beings. I tell you, you're nobody, oh, nobody. When you really think of it, nobody wins a war. Because the agony of defeat will linger, nations still hating one another and superpowers. They're looking for more power As long as violence and aggression still dwell in the hearts of man Brother, the war will go on It cannot be won No, 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 the war will go on It cannot be won Fallout from war is chaos Plenty agony, plenty pain that may never rise up again. Collapse of the money system, disruption of foreign trade, people turning against their leaders for the blunders that they have made. Environmental pollution, radiation taking its course, and the thousands that die in battle, oh, what a waste of human resource. Of course, look! Nobody, oh nobody. But when you really look at it, nobody wins a war. The brutal clash of ideologies, carnage and social anarchy, and life reduced to pitiful dimensions. The falling back of progress and growth for entire generations. Sister, it cannot be won. The war will go on. No, 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 the war will go on. It the cannot be won. Hear the music. War is just like a racket. It pays dividends for a few. But what does it profit the masses? I mean, laymen like me and you. While the leaders play in their chess games, using the masses as pawn with political propaganda. The massacre still goes on. The soldiers, they never started. But they give their lives easily. While the leaders are in a safe place working on. Strategies. So you see, I know nobody, what nobody. But when you really look at it, nobody wins a war. It has stayed the passage of history with the blood of the weak and the mighty. Great, great cultures vanish from history. Look, war can create and destroy political. As it goes on, brother, the war will go on. It cannot be won. No, 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 the war will go on. It cannot be won. The object of war is simple. Just conquer and take over. It doesn't matter how many people get wiped out in the massacre. The enemy must be vanquished. The battle has to be won, but the conflict will never be over. Cause the agony lingers on. There'll always be more dictators, more Hitlers, more.
for Saddam Hussein. And with these lunatics in power, it will just start all over again. Nobody wins a war We need a spiritual revolution To stop this brutish aggression Always peace in the world will always be out of our hands As long as the quest for wealth and power still live in the hearts of man Sister, the war will go on It cannot be won No, 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 the war will go on War cannot be won. The war will go on. Peace in the world. The war will go on. We need a spiritual revolution. Singing Sandra with some wonderful diction there, doing Nobody Wins a War live on stage in Brooklyn. Now, her biggest feat was entering the Calypso Monarch competition in Trinidad and Tobago for the first time this year. And um, I was asking her whether or not it psychologically affected her in such a way as to make a bit apprehensive, knowing that after 17 years, the biggest name in the Calypso business, the mighty Sparrow, was also in the competition. Singer Francis Quay Massey is my mentor. And um, he has helped me along greatly. And knowing that he was out of the competition for 17 years and being back this year, I can be out there, you know, in competition, not with the true sense of the word competition, because when I go to competitions, I leave the word and the true meaning of competition home in that I go to do a performance. But it was really great. It was an honor being out there among Sparrow, Stalin, you know, not to be outdone, um, Proko, because they are all former monarchs. And it was really, it was great being there. As a matter of fact, I was a reserve, I was first a reserve where there were eight competitors and two reserves. And um, the, the bargaining body, which is the NCC, NCC National Carnival Commission, decided to take ten instead of eight, where I was included as a, a formal competitor. And um, I came from the back there and still people who were official excuse me, competitors, I end up, I end up placing six and put some of them down in the back line. You yeah, you, you, you tied with Stalin, with right? With Stalin, of course. That is a feat in itself. Of course. It's, it's very easy to beat the black man. <laughs> <laughs> so to be there with him was really an honor. So it was a, a pleasurable experience for you? Yes, because just placing among the top ten, because being a finalist, which puts you among the top, the cream of the crop for that season then, I should say. And being there was really, I considered myself a winner. The time I was even made a reserve, I considered myself a winner. And even as I sit here, still consider myself a winner. You have paid your dues up to a point in the sense that when people say Calypso and they say female Calypsonian, immediately Calypso Rose, Singing Francine, and more recent times, Denise Plummer will come into fold. We also had um, Isla Noor. Mm -hmm. Now we have Singing Sandra. Mm -hmm. Now that you're one of the prominent female Calypsonians, when you perform, when you reach on stage, knowing that you are a woman, does that have an effect? Do you think you have something special to prove to the audience? Yes, I am. Um, in that, I had, like, I had a Calypso a few years ago saying, anything you could do, I could do too. So there's what, you know, in one way, saying to the male Calypsonians, hey, we can do it too. And on another hand, beckoning women to come into Calypso. In Trinidad, you will see a lot of women singing Calypso. I mean, the names are not known. But it hurts me a lot in, in my travels and things to see, to go into the other islands. There are not much women singing Calypso. I try my best to encourage some of them, you know, like off the street. You will hear this one tell you, I used to sing, you know, and I stop and for diverse reasons. So I am um, out there representing the woman. Because some, some women, you know, sometimes we have take like sexy employers, for instance, one of my songs, which was more popularly known as Die With My Dignity. I know of women that have been in that position for some time and couldn't speak out. And with singing Sandra now saying, hey, we go keep, we honey, let them keep the money and we go die with dignity. Some women felt that, you know, strength like this coming from a woman. Well, yes, a woman said that. So I could stand up and tell you now, you hear what singing Sandra say, keep yourself for yourself. Yeah, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, the true so, meaning of Calypso, the meaning, voice of the underprivileged, yeah, of the oppressed. Of the oppressed, yes. you know. And, and so I, I am out there then like a prophetess. 
you know, handling these issues. And sometimes women may come and tell, some, come and tell me at times, um, Sandra, why are you single so, so, so? Okay, let's talk about it. And if I can come up with, you know, something suitable, I will do it. Just to represent, not just one woman, because, it, it, you know, we are all in the same situation or exposed to the same situation. So my job out there means a lot to me. The Calypso business, which is dominated by men, with you coming up as a budgeting Calypsonian, I am sure that the, uh, the comments from the, um, the, the male Calypsonians have done a lot to, to help you build that super confidence you have now. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, you are, <laughs> most likely. Um, there are some male Californians that um, I would like to mention, like Stalin, for instance. Sometimes he will he will take you to the bridge immediately. You do something like you don't like, or you make some type of guest here, here and he find well that's not you. He would call you one time, sister here yeah, now. I ain't like that, you know, you didn't have to do that so. And sometimes he look for the harshest word to use, not to hurt you, but even though it hurts you, it is done with love. That, you know, you could go out there and work on it. And, you know, hey, I'm here to help you. So if it happens, because if you come and you pamper, you know, women love to be pampered. So once you see pamper, you pamper, you figure, well, look, I ain't do nothing wrong, or it could pass over. So sometimes the harsh things that they say to you really help you. Although you like to hear the love it, you know, <laughs> and maybe only human. So, but yes, it helps in a lot of ways. And I must say, there are the male, Calips male Calipsonians who are very, very, very genuine, who are helping us in, like, Putting other, trying to put other women out on the line. The versatile singing Sandra on Culture Share. Now you heard her mention about the Mighty Sparrow, Black Stalin, and Crow Crow. We'll be having one of them coming up next. <laughs> 